Welcome, listeners, to Kyle and Cody's Cult Cinema Cast. I'm Kyle. Cody. Yeah. Uh, Cody uh, decided we were watching The Shining this week. Or not, sorry, no, that's, um, The Shining's a good movie. The Happening. I wish we did The Shining. That, 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 like, yeah, that would have been a very different uh, film altogether. I don't even know if we could have, uh, Jesus Christ. Sixty million dollar budget and it boxed off as a uh, hundred and sixty three million dollars. Uh, it was forty six million, I think, which is still like a uh, great good pro- six million. Uh, uh forty eight to sixty million. million on the estimate. Yeah, so on the low end, forty eight million dollars, and then it probably ran an extra. I mean, for for all things considered, like the. Not a whole lot of, like, special effects in this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, they do fine for profit-wise. $163 million at the box office, so that's a good turnaround. I don't know why the movie's not good, like, at all. And, I mean, uh, I think, uh, personally, like, a lot of the, the the budget went to probably their, uh, their cast at this point in time, considering yeah. it's, like... Uh, Mark Wahlberg in 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zoe Deschanel and uh, John... I, I can never say this guy's name. A little... <laughs> uh, which guy? Sorry, is the director? Le, le, uh, no, L- John, John Le- Le- John Leguizamo. Leguizamo. Okay, yeah. Um, Him and then... Pretty much unknown after that, but uh, those, those three there. Yeah, and Mark Wer- Mark Werbergs. I mean, they get, they pay him way too much. Honestly, he's not that. He's funny comedically, but he's not. Um, like he's made good. Uh, like he's gotten like. No, I think I was watching a. I said I, I was watching a like cinema since, and they're like, and Mark Wahlberg giving a. Donnie Wahlberg impression playing uh, Elliot Moore, who's the main huh. character, or who's the the name of the character in the movie. So, um, Donnie Wahlberg is probably the least. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg's got like a couple Oscar nominations, but I've never understood. Like that, that must be lightning in the bottle there, because he is bad like ninety percent of the time. He's never won. It feels but... like uh, politics at that point in time. And I keep on forgetting that he, he was in a a funk pop band when he was, a, like, a kid. Oh, yeah, he was in... Uh, Mookie uh, Mark the, the funk... Funky Bunch. Oh, God. That, I thought he was in something less silly sounding. But, um, no, I guess it, not. It's definitely a, as, as silly sounding as... Uh, which is really funny because, uh, like, I'm just looking at his Wikipedia page, and it's like, uh, during his early life, he perpetuated several crimes, and then, like, in the next sentence, it was like, in the 1990s, Mark Wahlberg was a member of the music group Marking Mark and the Funky Bunch, with whom he released several, way too many albums, uh, three by the counts of things. Yeah, he got an Oscar nominations for like uh, The Departed and The Fighter, which I don't know. There's there's this weird sweet spot where like they really they really like put him into like a really serious movie and they managed to like get him to act normal for a couple minutes. And those are okay. But like if if he's in like a movie that's even like kind of bad, it's just like he becomes insufferable. He's okay in, like, pure comedies. Mm -hmm. Like, other guys in the Ted movies, I think those are, like, good performances from him. I have no complaints about that. Uh, He's an entourage, which I haven't seen. Like, he's either got to be in, like, a quality drama or, like, a comedy. But, like, there's these, like, mid-tier action movies where he's just the worst. And this fits into, like, the bad parts of his like filmography um because he's just like he needs yeah i think he needs to be kept on like sort of a leash or let off the leash but if you kind of like he's just trying to do it on his own doesn't really work and and uh 
M. Night Shyamalan, I feel like he's one of those ac- uh, directors that he's not the best with actors. Which, I mean, there's lots of great directors who aren't, like, they just that just don't happen to be good uh, actor directors. Um, they still make great movies, like George Lucas. Um, I think you could argue, like, sometimes, a lot of, like, really, you could maybe accuse, like, the Wachowski sisters of being like that, but um, I don't know. It's he's just not doesn't really get that that. Um, and as far as that, he's actually one of the better directors who can't really do direct their actors properly. Um, he has done good movies, Shyamalan, but like um, he produces a lot of bad movies. And as the director, like that's always just like a really damning thing. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually kind of on the fence about him uh, in the happening actually because they're. There's a part of me that actually wants to like this film, and uh, the part of me that actually wants to like this film is the the part of me that is somewhat grounded in science. Like, at the end of the movie, they bring up uh, something called the Red Ring, which is in the sea, I do believe, where the uh, uh, LJ start killing off fish. Yeah, is that the, not a real thing? Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, I'm not um, a I'll, scientist or anything. Like, I'll bring I'll I'll bring it up here to get like a better description of it. Um, it's called the Red Tide. Okay. It was a um, like a harmful alg. It's like an algae bloom. Um, and there was like a bad one off like the coast mm-hmm. of Australia, but they happen all over the place. Like you can get them in just like reg- regular yeah. lakes from time to time. Uh, nor a lot of it's green like green algae does the same thing, but there's like also like a red algae, which is just like sometimes green ish algaes can be okay or neutral, but like red algaes I think are generally bad, but they can mm-hmm. like, ca- like kill, like destroy environmental areas essentially. Yeah. It's I, I didn't like this film at all. This may be like, I don't, I think it's probably one of the worst films we've reviewed. I'm putting it down there with the Avengers, uh, that, uh, the UK Avengers film. Uh, I think those, these are like in that same category of bad where I just like hated it the whole way through and was just like, I wanted it to end pretty badly from start to finish. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's also like. I've kind of had this rant building for like a little bit about like um, I've never had like a good opportunity to like put it out, but it's also one of these. Um, it's also this is a kind of a disaster movie. It's like that's sort of the part of the genre it fits in that and horror. But I mean, those aren't usually exclusive at all. But um, it's a disaster. It's like a movie following a natural disaster. I don't feel it's a good entry into that genre. Partially because of like the explanation for where the uh, event comes from is silly and doesn't work throughout the movie. They'll eventually figure out that like plants are uh, giving off pheromones that are making people kill themselves, Uh, which yeah, content warning for this. If you have an issue with like watching people like, kill them like uh, commit suicide in like random any way just don't watch this it's pretty rough um it doesn't come with like um the how you say like emotional like build up of like actual things but it's um a lot of those same uh like ways of carrying it out do happen throughout the thing which i and but like where i'm getting at with this is this is a movie where the protagonists are set up against this threat that they can't reasonably solve. And it, it, it pretty early on, you're just like, okay, um, how do we even, uh, like they can't do anything because there's no way they can, especially when like when we, it was, we go later and we come to the conclusion that like, no, these guys can't, do anything to solve this problem because none of the characters in this movie that we follow are like 
scientists um, of the caliber that could like solve this problem. So you're just kind of like following some people um, and waiting for them to like die off, essentially. So, I mean, ar- arguably, Mark Wahlberg is uh, notoriously not not capable of solving uh, mass extinction events at the uh, uh, like human global scale level, but like. They had a biologist in here at one point in time, and every I think I think people were too hung up on the fact that the this was like early on in the film they they stated that it was potentially a, a terrorist attack, like a chemical uh, biological warfare attack perpetuated by terrorists. Um, I think it, if they stopped and re- like thought about their own stuff or. A while there, they they probably could have pieced it together, considering like Mark Wahlberg's the science teacher in here, and he pretty much got the premise kind of right away. But I mean, arguably, he ran into the the uh, the biologist who kind of like spelled it out for him, and yeah, they were able to piece that together. But also, like it 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 is meshing the genres of both horror and. A disaster movie and i think if it stuck to one lane ultimately it would have been better but they uh-huh. at one point in time they had like two groups going that were trying to uh one guy was trying to go get his wife and the other one ended up with his daughter and stuff like that uh like we we've pretty much figured out uh uh john I, I'm not going to even... I'm just going to call him John at this point in yeah. time. Legozama. Uh, uh, John, yeah, Legozama's character. Ultimately, he uh, he ends up, like, dying pretty pretty much off the bat. Like, right off the, the hop uh-huh. within, like, two minutes. And I think, I think if you were to have two co- coherent situations happening at the same time, it could... It would kind of make it almost a little bit uh, higher stakes, but they kind of uh, literally just uh, killed them off really quickly, and I feel like it uh, wasn't very deserving. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. everything, everything is okay. We should probably just get into the plot before before I get into like my whole. <laughs> I mean, I, on this movie, so I yeah, my my like, kind of point was. <laughs> Um, with a sort of movie where, like, the characters are, like, kind of doomed, and you're just kind of, like, going through the movie waiting for them to die, I don't tend to enjoy that. It's sort of, like, it's the reason I st- stopped watching The Walking Dead, because I just got that vibe where, like, I was just gonna watch all the characters die, and I wasn't really getting anywhere. And it's not that that's necessarily, like, a bad way to go, it's just, like, I don't want to watch that, right? Uh, it's not pleasant and like i i think there's artistic merit to it it's just like not to my taste but like i i don't know what quite we're going for here is this is yeah that's a really really shaded shaded way to look at things like especially like uh, i'm not gonna watch the game of thrones because i know that eventually like the one character i'm rooting for is gonna die off like i get that i feel for you i've been there (laughs) It's not so um, much the one character. It's like, like I'm going to watch all the characters die. That's sort of my point. Like, I deal with character death. It's like watching, like, I feel like all these characters are doomed. And it's either going to have some, like, unsatisfying thing toward the end, or I'm just going to watch them all die. And I don't care for really either of those. Mm-hmm. And I do find the ending in this sort of, like, and ultimately, I, like, I thought... yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, honestly, I don't know where they were trying to go with the ending by the end of it. Like, at least, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I I can't even talk about the ending without getting into a whole spiel. Because that's like... <laughs> this film is like, is this trying to be itself. cosmic horror? Is it trying to be like a... I think it's a bad... Like, I think there's a couple things you can describe it as. You could maybe describe it as like a cosmic horror type thing you can maybe describe it as like a disaster movie you could describe it as a horror movie i don't just believe it does any of them particularly well Mm -hmm. yeah 
Um, there, I guess there's people that like this movie, but there's there's people that like all the Shyamalan movies, but I don't think anyone likes all the Shyamalan movies. Like each movie has fans. I don't just don't believe there's too many people in the Venn diagram of, of gram of like people who like all the Shyamalan movies and fit into the dead center. Yeah, and like uh, as I was saying earlier, like there's definitely like a a big asterisk on like whether or not this movie is good for me. I think it can be good. I think if it was done better, it could have been good. But as it currently stands, I do not think this movie holds up. Well, to me, it holds up in the M, M. Night Shyamalan like universe because I um kind of disdain his uh, whole shtick that he has going on. Uh, And only a few of the Shyamalan films I actually enjoyed. And I don't know if he was actually good after The Departed. So anything before that is kind of... Yeah, this this movie does have like two... Like it's two selling points like uh, name-wise or like two like iffy like mixed result act uh, like properties like malk works makes some good stuff but he's made a lot of bad stuff and same with uh, m night Shyamalan. Uh, for the record well, i think I mean, yeah uh, zoe Deschanel, same thing uh yeah. john john like was was yeah uh, him too yeah uh, early on he was not he he played luigi in the super mario movie like mm. you've got a really dig to try and find uh he's he's a he's a really good voice actor um i don't really care for him as a actor actor or at least not what i've seen of him uh do you have shawalan movies you like or have you seen one you like uh okay so i i <laughs> no. no um I liked Split, but I liked Split based on, like, uh, the fact that it was uh, James McAvoy. McCoy, yeah. yeah. McCoy. McAvoy. There we go. That's his name. Uh, McAvoy's, like, performance in it. And I didn't mind the premise. I didn't mind the premise. Like, it had. Uh... I enjoy that entire trilogy. But like, yeah, I'll say that I like the yeah, Unbreakable. See, that's split where glass. I kind of, I kind of uh, draw the line. Yeah, I I defend them, but like I, the, again, I'm, I I recognize that like there's very few people that hold that opinion, and it kind of proves my point of like, there's very few people that like all the, uh, j- like, I think there's a pretty universal like for unbreakable and the sixth sense but beyond that everything's sort of iffy um splits up there too but there's people that don't like split and i understand why they don't like split but i i i'm in the i'm one of those few individuals that like that whole trilogy but yeah that's that's just one something i wanted to establish uh just see if we liked any of that i've said what Wahlberg performances i like but uh, yeah, into the plot. You did not make yeah. the departed. Okay. You did not. I was thinking of the sixth sense, um, not the departed. Oh, yeah, well, I, the I've departed. never yeah. seen uh, the sixth sense. Yeah, me neither. So, to the extent of like what I know about this, the sixth sense is I know that. Uh, it, well, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen the sixth sense <sighs> before. Uh, um. Bruce Willis's kid sees dead people, and at the end of the movie, it's revealed that Bruce Willis has died, and his son is communicating with him from beyond the grave. But, like, I mean, that's been parodied so often that, like, it's become... It, like, I, I've it's said like this. like one of those films that you kind of just yeah. know where it goes because of the... I've said this... I don't think anyone watches Sixth Sense without knowing the twist. Like, I don't think that's uh, like that is a thing that like critics did like when the movie first came out. But no one's revisiting that movie without having like an understanding of the twist. And like, like, what's the draw otherwise? Mm-hmm. 
Like that's the whole thing. And that's not a bad thing. That's not Maybe. a criticism. That's just um like the fact no one's watching that without uh like knowing the twist. And I mean it, it really does boil down to like I think a, a movie having a, a twist ending was cool back when the internet wasn't such a big um prevalent thing because obviously it's going to jade the way anybody uh planning to sit down and watch the sixth sense uh to have it kind of already spoiled for you is kind of uh and i mean i think i think uh it boils down to also like even this movie maybe not to the same extent as as the sixth sense a lot of people like even last week i brought this movie up and just okay maybe not to the same extent i was just saying that like it's the same thing along with uh where i'm like the trees are killing people and then everybody's like oh i know what movie you're talking about you're talking about the happening but i mean maybe not to that extent but somewhat to that extent no i like i i think a i, I think a good twist can be like a draw actually like if a, a movie with a good twist it doesn't matter if it, you spoil it cuz like that's actually like oh i want to see how they pull that off i think that's a, definitely a craft you can do mm-hmm. it but like I think there's like um M Sean like there's a twist at the end of Unbreakable that like I didn't know about and like it, I'm glad I didn't know about that because it really kind of uh, changes the way you look about the movie. But um that movie's generally pretty good on its own. Uh, like but I think a good draw can be a uh, like a draw for the fi- a good twist can be a draw. I think um the twist in like Star Wars mm-hmm. makes the entire franchise more watchable. I don't think it matters that everyone knows it. I think it's just like, uh, uh, I think it does improve the work that it exists, whether or not you've seen it or not. Because like when you watch, yeah, uh, the, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to think of that as a, a twist with an asterisk at the end of it, at the point of, in time, because like, uh, like the whole entire Star Wars franchise like watching it from start to finish like oh anakin skywalker is uh darth vader ultimately um yeah okay (laughs) i see what you're saying yeah it drives but the lore in a way yeah mm -hmm. like walking into the phantom menace of course i uh, i was like like maybe seven at the time and i don't think i've actually fully watched all the prequels to star wars before i probably watched the phantom menace maybe um (laughs) but i wasn't sitting in the uh phantom menace theaters sitting there going oh how is anakin gonna turn into darth vader by the end of uh this uh trilogy like what makes him turn evil but that's because i was Once again, like, seven at the time that, like, six or seven at the time the the, uh, Phantom Menace came out, so. Yeah, um, I think we'll get into it. I think, um, so, uh, what's happening starts with, uh, credit sequence, which is sought over a, like, time lapse of, uh, clouds moving through the sky. Uh, it looks bad, I think. It just kind of looks like a rough-looking scene. I think it's, like, foreshadowing, because, like, the the bad stuff, the bad thing in this movie is kind of like foreshadowed by wind because this movie uses a uh, invisible threat, which, uh, I don't, yeah, it, I don't like it, but anyway, um, we get a title card saying New York city, central park, eight thirty three AM. We see two girls reading a book on a bench. Uh, one of the girls starts acting weird and, uh, takes one of her, like, uh, Sometimes women have little uh, spikes that they put through their hair to like form a bun. And she pulls that out of her hair and puts it directly into her neck, killing herself. And it's kind of a, okay, that's weird. Um, Which is is okay. Um, The next scene I find a little bit more egregious. Um, We see a bunch of construction workers 
uh, chatting outside the job site. Uh, when one of the uh, construction workers working on like a higher floor falls off and uh, falls and like crashes into the thing, the guys on the ground start calling an ambulance when another guy falls down and then another guy and then another guy and then another guy. And eventually we see like 10 people fall and we get a glimpse and the guy looks up and sees them uh, and like sees them walking off the edge. They're not falling. They're purposely like walking off. And it's a scene that could be good, but it's so terribly acted. Like it's I find it's like he's just so not showing proper amount of, amount of emotion. Absolutely phoning it in. Or he's just like being given bad. Uh, the actor's giving being given bad direction, uh, and it's awful. I don't care for it very much. This is just the, the scene that really like killed this movie for me really early on. Before I meet any of the main characters or anything, I just just was really disappointed in how this turned out. Because um, people aren't panicking. Uh, you don't see anyone do CPR either, mm. or like uh, first aid. In general, CPRs probably maybe not the thing, but um, it's I think this scene is terribly acted. Um, an effective little um set piece on paper. Um, I think it's kind of uh like I, I could easily see this scene being good, but um, I don't think M Night Shyamalan is capable of making this look good. Um, I think he's in this more for like the premise than he is for like technical skill of being able to pull this off. We cut to Mark Wahlberg's character, um, forgetting his name, because I don't, it's Mark Wahlberg, Elliot Moore. Elliot um, Moore. Yeah. He uh, is teaching a high school science class and is just being absolutely insufferable. Like he's asking his, he has a scene where like he asks, in the scene he's asking his students about like um, a phenomena that's happening with uh, bees where they're sort of disappearing everywhere. Which is a real thing to my knowledge, but um, he's just like, oh yeah, everyone shout out a theory. And I'm like, why would they have a theory? Like, I'm not saying like, okay, maybe someone knows something off the top of their head, but like no one, I don't think a room of high school students would typically have any good, uh, like one of them might have like a reasonable answer. I mean, there's it's, not yeah. like unreasonable answers at the like yeah of course there's like completely stupid answers but like mm -hmm. global warming nuclear i think they gave like half decent answers for like high school students that are like i'm just saying this isn't out of the realm of possibilities for uh, a science class to be talking about the disappearance of bees like i don't know it's I just didn't like it. It rubbed me the wrong way, especially like uh, toward the end of the scene. He goes after one student who's just like, what? You don't have an answer. Well, you can't think of a reason why bees are going through an extinction event. You're dumb. Quit being dumb, kid. I'm like, what? No, I like I don't actually. Here's the other thing. I don't think that M. Night Shyamalan has um, a significantly uh, better understanding of the natural world than a lot of people do. I think he's maybe watched a few documentary. I just do not believe he has any sort of expertise, uh, which would make this would lend himself to uh, making well, this I, film more conspicuous, uh, uh, like uh, believable. I mean, that might not necessarily be M Night Shyamalan's. I think the, okay, no, it is. It, it is written by M Night Shyamalan. Yeah. I thought maybe he didn't write it, but but I mean, it, it boils down to a couple of things. This whole scene not working out, and it, it has a lot to do with uh the writing and also a lot to do with like Mark Wahlberg's ability to interpret that writing and put it into an art articulate scene at that point in time. So yeah, I, I yeah, Mark Wahlberg is also kind of at fault here. I think they probably just should have grabbed the serious like a better actor for this scene. Like grab I don't mean any, this, like, this whole scene boils down to like like, uh, the ending of this scene, uh, they pull Mark Wahlberg out of class, give some exposition, and then he goes back to class, and then the scene ends on Mark Wahlberg going, hold up a second, hey guys, wait, 
And then all his students turn around and look at him, and he goes, oh, nothing. And then just leaves it at that. Yeah. Like, gives us no indication on what he was was trying to say. And then it just fades into another scene. It's like, uh-huh. how can you as a director just be like, okay, that's where, where we're going to leave things off and then uh, progress the story at that point in time? I so. also don't, I also feel like part of the problem is that like Walt, Ber- Walt Warburg doesn't seem like a likable teacher in the scene. Like if you had like um, Mr. Moore for your science class, I don't think you'd be terribly uh, happy with it. Like, I don't think Mr. Moore is anyone's mm. favorite science teacher. He's not, like, he's trying, but he's well, kind of annoying. Yeah. And I mean, like, I get it that they're uh, trying to work with a lot right off the bat, where they're trying to introduce the plot, they're trying to introduce the character, mm-hmm. um, they're trying to show the character in some form of relatable way, and it just mm-hmm. it just really doesn't work. And... Honestly, I could give two flying fucks that Mark Wahlberg is the science teacher in this uh, scenario. It has it has no um, bearing to the, the how this movie progresses and where it goes from there, and um, it kind of has nothing to do with anything. And uh, honestly, at, at that point in time, maybe you should be trying to give that. Uh, scene to uh, John at that point in time mostly because like uh, we need some form of emotional recognition with this character and uh, you don't necessarily have to introduce your main character right off the bat like you can put in a side character and then go from there but Mm -hmm. that's just my opinion and I also feel like my my other issue with Mark Warbuck's character and I kind of hinted at this earlier where like why Mark? Why this character? Like, why are we following this guy in particular? Like, I'm sure, like, everyone in the story has, like, an equally sad story. Like, he kind of, like, had, like, I don't believe he's, like, a, a like too much of an expert to, like, solve this problem. I feel like they just picked him, and, like, they're just, like, going from, like, his point of view, mm-hmm. which is a valid, like, story structure, but I don't think this quite, um, earns that? Because, like, I, there's something to be yeah. said about, like, movies from the point of view of, like, some guy on the ground during a big disaster. But, like, I, f- yeah, it's just he's, like, why this guy? It could I could be watching any a movie starring, mm-hmm. like, any of the other guys, any other characters who survive this, like, plot. Um, I could be following them instead, but I'm following this guy. Why? Yeah, and I think ultimately, like, uh, what's his, like... John's character has like twice as more compelling of a uh like like story arc in it than than what Mark Wahlberg's like character does and like they try and make him like more relatable by like oh his girlfriend's like cheating on him and like he doesn't know if their marriage is going to last and I'm like why are we throwing dating into this like bullshit like why do we need a love story like plot black line to make uh the characters more likable and i don't get me wrong i i don't hate zoe deschanel but she's definitely a better comedic actor than she is um a straight man and that's that might come back to bite me like uh in like i don't know what else she's acted in i I think she's done a couple of more serious stuff but Uh, yeah i think uh, like like a yeah john like is almost story arc is even like a lot better like i feel like that has a lot more of an emotional gut punch Mm -hmm. and like mark Wahlberg's character is just sort of unlike a little problem a also on like the uh point of like I think I think uh Mark like Wahlberg and uh Zoe's uh character like their characters their marriage arc I think that's the problem's like way overblown honestly I got that sort of read off of it I think like it just sounds like they got into a big fight like right before this happened like I don't think this is like a marriage ending thing honestly no I think no definitely like, not I mean there's some things to suggest that 
there's some things to suggest that like uh john says that um at their wedding uh what's her name what's their the character's name uh Al, Al, alma uh alma's alma. just like yeah alma's just like, like uh fucking yeah. old person name too yeah eh, someone needs to be named that they gotta be like, young uh, at some point nobody needs nobody needs to be named alma that 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 name can die like in the past essentially like I don't oh, think I like that's a grandmother's name. Yeah, and that eventually she'll be a grandmother. Name. <laughs> you grow into it. It's like Gertrude. Yeah, again, you grow into it. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it like there is a like a line that like John uh John like his almost character Julian says where he like he saw Alma cry like crying at their wedding. But yeah, there's I don't necessarily buy that this is like a long-term problem it just sounds like uh, the crux of the issue is like alma went out um to get ice cream with like a friend a guy at work and she was scared to tell uh mark uh like uh, elliot which i guess i don't i just don't know yeah i don't i'm not convinced this is like a serious like issue for sure like this might just be like a thing that they'll get over I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, yeah, it, the scene you had talked about earlier when they, uh, he gets, uh, uh, El Mr. Moore gets pulled into a, uh, side room. The teach the principal talks to all the teachers and tells them that, uh, okay, they think there's been like a terrorist attack. A bunch of people are, uh, dead, um, around Central Park, uh, which Mark Wahlberg says like, oh, geez, the park, why that's so weird. I'm like, not really. I don't think like bombing Central Park is like like a strange like version of a terrorist attack. Um, not to say it's not tragic, but I don't think it's like a strange. It would be a strange thing to do for a terrorist. Um, the caveat being like anything a terrorist might do not being strange, but I don't think it's like that's a plot that could happen. Because people go there, you could get a lot of people. In yeah, theory. like I, I feel like, but I think in terms of like a, a terrorist, a terrorist wanting to do the maximum amount of impact um, in New York City, it is kind of a weird, weird choice because like you're gonna get casualties, sure, but you're not gonna do that like massive, like city mayhem. Uh, if I'm just, I mean, like bombing any other like random building because of the the fallout's going to be a lot bigger if like a, a building collapses and then it starts a ch chain reaction and like more buildings collapse. Uh, well, a part of that I think uh, like part of that's like opportunity. I think like you could argue that, like okay, this is what we can do. Like it's a lot easier to get something into Central Park mm -hmm. than it would be like to get it into like central station or whatever but i i think there's also the point it's of not like, even that like just get to like a, yeah i feel I, like a parking garage would do just as a, like the same amount of destruction and like maybe yeah. there's less less casualties but the, ultimately i think uh well even more so like just because there's so many cars there and like you can just walk into i don't know I, I don't want to, like, publicly go out and state, like, this this is how I, I would perpetuate a terrorist attack. But, like, honestly, like, yeah, Central Park's a really weird choice. And it, it only makes sense in this, uh, in this scenario, in my opinion. But then again, like, like the Boston uh, Marathon bombing, like, who's going to be like, fuck all these people who are running, let's... <laughs> I don't know. At the end of the day, um, what separates a free, like a like a terrorist from a freedom fighter, is that like a terrorist is a guy that you can't like uh, properly assign a good like logical motive to. Like we're assigning logic to like someone mm -hmm. who is inherently doing something illogical. Like at the end of the day, that's just yeah, um, yeah. That's like at the end of the day, like okay, yeah. Um, you could say like, oh, there's all so many flaws with this, but like, 
this guy's these guys are crazy. They're not necessarily going to do the absolute most effective thing. There's a couple. I think even like on the best day, like this sort of thing would be dubiously effective because there. Yeah, there's a whole thing of like how effective is terrorism really but uh i think that's like a well it depends on the situation sort of thing anyway back to the story we see a uh we see as uh they the teach uh, the teacher assigned says that um oh yeah we're sending all the kids home for today which okay yeah fair, whatever yeah that makes sense that's perfectly fine thing to do they're probably not going to be able to concentrate mm -hmm. anyway once the word gets out um, they're those at most going to be able, I mean, some of these kids might've lost somebody, frankly. Uh, we don't, I don't have like a clear idea of the death toll. Really. It seems like they're getting a lot of people killed, but you don't see a lot of it on screen. So, um, I think also notably, there's not a lot of occasions where, um, this, these suicides result in like other casualties. They're just like getting themselves for the most part. There's a couple examples, maybe like one example of someone driving a car with people in it. And then another example of like uh, one lady uh, busting open a window to help uh, get people dead. But um, for the most part, no, they're not um, trying to kill, uh, kill other people when they're doing this. This isn't the disease from Crossed. Um, don't look up Crossed if you don't want if. Uh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Just to assume, like, just assume it's bad. Don't you don't need to look up crossed. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is a dark comic, and I I couldn't really like. Really... It's just like all the content warnings for crossed. Just all of them. Just all of them. Like, mm -hmm. if pick one, pick one, and it'll be in there. <laughs> yeah, pick whatever one you want. Grab, put them all in a big hat and then just like, okay, these are content warnings for crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, he go, uh, um, Elliot Moore goes back home. He goes to talk to his wife and, uh, they say they're evacuating the city. I don't know if that's the thing you do in this situation. Maybe that's just me being in like, uh, like living through a pandemic Maybe I, we, we have a we have a lot of different perspectives on a lot of these things, but this might be like a stay in your home situation more than anything. Though I don't know. It depends um, how people are situating this at this point in time. It, uh, as a pandemic, probably not. As a terrorist attack, though, maybe yeah. With like biological or like get chemical warfare. Yeah, get them out before they're exposed, I guess. Yeah, it's probably an evacuating type situation. But once again, this movie <laughs> harps on this whole terrorist plot for like way too long for I I guess it, 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 if if I were to sit down and rewatch this without knowing how the uh the the twist this would all seem very logical. But I'm jaded because I know know what's going on in the, in the film, so. Well, I think part of this is, like, I don't think uh, Shyamalan has, like, thought through this um, nearly as much as he needs to. But I think another part of this is, like, uh, how do I put this? Uh, I can't remember where I was going with that. Oh, man, I forgot. Yeah, I don't think he's fought this through all the way. I know this script went through like at least a rewrite because someone didn't take the first script. But um, oh yeah, I think um, I think he's trying to prove a point with the terrorist thing, which I think it's a valid point. I think it's a point he's trying to make as like um, something about like us assuming things, which I think it's a proof. Like there's a perfectly valid point to be made. Uh, in the, with this, I think there's a couple of points in this movie. I think there's an environmentalist message with this, which I think also has like a perfectly valid point that um, M. Night Shyamalan is trying to make. I just think he's doing a very bad job of it. I don't necessarily think he's like doing a harmful job of it, mm -hmm. but I don't think he's doing a good job. I don't think like not a good job for like the movie. 
because I don't think this works. So they get it. Yeah. No, and ultimately, I I don't think it 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 would uh, work in in the uh, uh, other sense because like even scientifically, you'd think that like oh plants are trying to kill us off. That's a that's a fairly fairly mm -hmm. standard point because we're destroying the environment that they live in. But we're also feeding the environment that they live in. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, I, like also like we there's... give them oxygen and they give us H T H T two O. Like they need us to survive as much as we need them to survive. So like, I don't know if that's. I think it's also worse. like a. I don't think this is doing like I think a lot of movies have like have like very good environmentalist messages. I don't like there's a lot of tons of them out there. Mm -hmm. This kind of just like says, what if nature tried to literally kill us? And then just and like then at the end of the movie, they just have like a TV guy be just like, hey, nature tried to kill us. We better smarten up. But I don't think that's really the best framing of this issue, really. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it ends up working out. It's because like really? also like uh, at the end of the movie. Uh, like everybody was like making fun of the the people that are like, oh, it's the plants, it's the plants, and even by the end of the movie, they're kind of making fun of the guy that was like, oh, it's the plants. Still, it's doing a bad job. Like his heart's so, in the right place, but he hasn't like interplant. Like this isn't like a metaphor. This is just him saying what he wants us to do, which doesn't make for a good film. That's just it. <laughs> We see a newspaper lying around saying that, like, oh, Philly... Kind of knowing too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we see a newspaper lying around that says uh, the murder rate in Phila Philadelphia is skyrocketing. 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 Uh, on the way out, another one of the uh, teachers, uh, Julian, played by John Leguizamo, uh, has a chat with um, uh, Elliot. They are good friends, and they have their chat. Um, he talks a little bit about the marriage trouble, and then when, uh, a little bit after, when, um, everyone arrives at the train station, Julian lets slip that he know that, um, he knew about the argument that, uh, Elliot and Alma had, and Alma, uh, goes to talk to Elliot, and it's just like, I can't believe you told him about that. Um, which kind of, like, emphasizes my point from earlier, that I don't think this was a really serious fight. Like, I mean, obviously bad. I think it was, ob like, absolutely a bad fight. But I don't think it was, like, a marriage-ending fight. I think they would eventually got over it. Or, like, this would have resolved itself some way. Um, that would have been, like, moderately healthy. And there's, like, a lot mm -hmm. of scenes like that. Uh, there's a scene a little bit later where one, uh, one of the guys they're uh, traveling around with is just like, Hey, uh, how come you never had kids? And, like, dude, you barely know this guy. Why are you telling him he should have had kids? <laughs> and I think Elliot's just like even like that. I'm like, wait, why the hell am I telling you any of this? The character's like fourteen or fifteen. So yeah, another thing. Yeah, that's also. I mean, weird. it's not great, but super weird. Yeah, yeah. the uh, The evacuation actually goes sw swimmingly, honestly. Like any other evacuation uh, scene in a disaster movie would have gone like. They all wish it would have gone this smooth. They say they do a whole thing about like how it was really hard to get tickets, but we don't see that, which is another bit of a problem. It's this all seems really funny that, that uh, yeah. like one of the like talking points later on in the film is like, oh, they're they're sending out near toxins when people gather in too big of a space. Mm. So like. When people are evacuating, you think that there would be like a higher death toll because of uh, the neurotoxins, but apparently it was like. Yeah, massive plot because... hole. Just a massive plot hole in the middle of the movie, yeah. too. Like, this should, like, the, the amount of chaos is like grandly over understated. And then, like, later on in, in the film, it's like, oh, the attack started at, like, 8.37 on one day and ended at, like, 9.20 the next day. Yeah, really weird. Like, that's You'd also, like, like, another... As soon as it started, that, that, that there would be so much more. It's like, oh, it only st started in, like, North 
west like of uh the united states which i don't know which side that is because if it's a florida if like the florida sign I, like yeah good for the plants but like if it's the other side i don't know what's on the other coast oh i didn't even realize he cut out there i've been just sitting here talking to myself yeah I... okay uh you were saying oh uh, fuck <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we dropped audio there sorry guys <laughs> Yeah, it's in the midst of a spiel, and uh, I can't even, for the life of me, remember what we were going on. <laughs> oh, I was a uh, statement about um, how the uh, the film like like progressed in it, it, its attack. Um, I guess you could argue that like the the more heavily populated uh, mm -hmm. areas have uh, a smaller amount of uh, like uh forest population but the, everybody's like oh we need to get away from this uh th this virus you'd think you'd think that the the cities would actually be more well guarded up against mm -hmm. uh like a, a plant-based neurotoxin because of the lack of uh natural yeah. um occurrence. that because was another of, thing we, i thought we've, uh, i mean a lot of places are are ultimately trying to like repopulate the, the 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 like central park and stuff like that and the, like wild areas of like wildlife conservation but like uh, we notoriously have destroyed so much of the the wildlife in uh big cities that i guess like the surrounding areas carrying it via the wind would mm -hmm. maybe cause issues but like but yeah it's sort of like only the plants in the big city start start to do the neurotoxin thing um and not like the billions of plants that would have like just like you could easily like decimate rural america in like a minute if you wanted to even the rural parts of the northeast as uh like populous as that may be um and then it like sort of could easily infiltrate the city but i don't again i think part of this is like it's the plants are going like in the logic of this, the plants are going for the most, uh, like, vulnerable, or, like, going for the most uh, bad part of the place. Because cities do, uh, like, kill, uh, do have a lot less plants. So it's making those plants kill more people. But, yeah, it just, it's, you never quite buy into, yeah, I don't think they do a lot to make you buy into this premise of the plants are all trying to kill us. Mm hmm and like once again it's uh it's one of those things that like if you apply any form of logic to it just kind of starts falling apart like and i feel like this is a massive oversight on like the 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 writing side and the, of course uh the directorial side i i think in, they gotta uh, go one of two ways actuality. i think they gotta go one of two ways Either make it more realistic that the plants are doing this and have like the uh, toxins spread in the countryside and like drift into the city, or they got to do a, a do a bunch more to sell this like Eldritch Horror angle where like yeah all the plants are trying to kill us. So you either got to do one of those things, and mm -hmm. the movie is doing neither of those things. But like those are the options. Or I think you got to make it more scientific or less. One of the two. Take your pick. Mm -hmm. And they, and I, I think they try to do that later on in a scene where Mark Wahlberg starts talking to a random fucking tree that he finds in the, like somebody's house, and it turns out to be a plastic a plastic tree, which kind of gave me a chuckle. But b besides that, I didn't really like buy into the whole premise of like the the whole entire plant civilization is trying to kill humans at that point in time, and. Uh, it's it's one of those things and it, it really boils down to like a breakdown of genres where the, you're trying to go horror but have it at such a massive scale that the idea of it kind of starts uh, like disintegrating I... in on itself because like uh, there's so many holes you can just po poke mm -hmm. um into this whole entire like plot line at this point in time so and i think um they do actually touch on some 
uh, where they say like, oh yeah, there's a type of plant that um, releases a pheromone that makes uh, wasps go after this certain type of caterpillar that likes to eat plants. Um, and I think if that's the inspiration for what's going on here, I think you do end up with it, like if you want to go more that direction, I think you do go and uh, go in more of a cross direction and just have like the plants go after like uh, the humanities, like natural predators and just have like every uh, serial killer and authoritarian like go off at once. And I think that's actually like mm -hmm. probably scarier. Like just have every, um, every would be tyrant just go off on their worst impulses all at once. That would be sort of true. One of the things that they like, I think the Last of Us does really well is um, they have a scene in, I think it was the second or third episode where uh, they bring in like a top level uh, fungal expert and she's sitting there and they're having a conversation and they're like, well, we've got one infected and it went off in a factory like you know what what are are like the how can we proceed and she just says bomb start bombing the places everywhere like it, it just it's that level of like threat yeah it is and they're not like initiation yeah. like like it's just they try and do it a couple of times with like the emergency broadcast and this uh -huh. television like um, spiels, but they don't do a really good job of like showing the panic or showing just how much of a threat this actually is. And once again, it, it boils back to the fact that they're trying to bring it up as a terrorist attack instead of like a natural occurring phenomenon. Phenomenon, that word. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to go, but they're not going any of those ways. I think part of it, like, uh, M. Night Shyamalan did have to, like, sort of go looking for the funding for this, because a lot of the major studios didn't go for it uh, at first. So he had to, like, sort of get his own money on that. Turned out okay for him, I guess. But um, I think it just kind of ended in, like, a worse product. Um, he ends up going, uh, getting mm -hmm. this, uh, like, uh, sort of, like, it's an Indian studio. I don't know if they do, uh, like, how much they really do in the um, States. Well, look, I'm up, I'm up real quick. Production companies, UTV Motion Pictures. At the, it's an Indian company of some sort. Yeah, it, it's been since bought by Disney, which is why you can find this on Disney+. Plus. Uh, yeah, I think they do a lot more, like... Yeah, it's a lot of... Uh, they do a lot of Indian films. And then I think they started break uh yeah they start breaking into uh this is part of their attempt to break into uh american filmmaking which i think seems to start in like 2006 or 2007 um when they start doing like some movies because uh lo the lead actors or like the directors are like all indian names up until 2007 when you get like uh chris rock I think, yeah, I think it is actually, it's just, a, it's a lot of an Indian production studio, and this is um, one of their attempts to go get into uh, American motion pictures. And yeah, I guess it, it didn't go too well. I'm not trying to make like a further point than that, but I guess they didn't, um, they were the suckers that bought into this movie. I mean, I can't call them the suckers. They made their money. It's whatever. Um, I'm not going to, I, I, mm -hmm. I'd, I, there's scarcely a time when I'm like, no, you cannot make this movie. This is morally wrong for this movie to exist. And that this movie doesn't make me that kind of angry. I don't like it very much, but it's not like... I would never go as far as to be like, this should never exist. Who gave Shyamalan this money? <laughs> it, it, it gives me hope that some production company at one point in time sat down and would read this script and got really stoked and they're like yeah let's make this movie because like one day i'm gonna write a film and it's gonna be really shitty and have a really mm -hmm. shitty premise like that and like i'm just glad that <laughs> somewhere out there there's gonna be a market for whatever like shitty idea i come up with <laughs> for, for for a film or maybe i'll be 
It's Super every Dragos. young boy's dream to find some uh, dumbass to give him twenty million dollars to make a movie. Um, I don't mean to say that. Like, if you if you give either of us twenty million dollars to make a movie, you're a very smart man. Uh, you're you're handsome, uh, pretty, <laughs> be- whatever whatever um, positive attribute you want me to say to you. Um, as long as you're like not some sort of like absolute moral repugnant. Uh, yeah, I have every nice thing in the world I can possibly say to yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's make good use of that twenty million dollars or three million dollars. I don't know. I don't know how much they probably twenty million there is probably hiding also, from us. Uh, a theory theory put forward uh, um, when I was watching a, a cinema since, or uh, yeah, I think it was cinema since they put forward the theory that that this was not anything except for mass hysteria there was no plant-based toxin and that everybody else like reacting to this uh scenario is just going like paranoid about being infected by a neurotoxin which is kind of a cool theory but like once again i think if we start looking into like that side of things we could also find a lot of holes to poke into it um Maybe it wasn't the whole grand scheme of things. Like, maybe there was, like, a small population that were affected by a neurotoxin, and then other places where people just kind of... It's like uh, COVID, when COVID was, like, uh, first introduced. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking to myself, do I have COVID or do I just have a really bad cold? Like, just every time you get sick now, that's always going through your head. head. Like, like, yeah, yeah, is this COVID or is this not COVID? So uh, I wouldn't say it was like on a level of mass hysteria, but there was definitely that level of paranoia going through my mind. I think uh, with like, especially, I think there's some of that going around because especially like, like, julian's death scene i think you could argue that's what's happening i don't think you can prove it i think that's like consistent with how the virus uh the neurotoxin behaves uh in other scenes but i think you could argue that's what happens there Mm -hmm. i could i could see either way I, i think there's good points on either side of that argument so uh yeah our main characters get on the train uh julian's wife uh ends up trying to says she's going to catch a later train and they end up saying that like oh yeah she's actually going to go to new jersey instead on the train they get news that philadelphia has been hit by the neurotoxin and also boston so that's a whole scene so that's a whole thing they end up uh taking the train for a while and get and the train ends up stopping in this uh random three horse town along the place uh and they get out and they're told by the uh, conductors they're just like yeah this is the end of the line we're not taking you any further which yeah if they're trying if they're trying to avoid major cities they might not want to just put them in another major city that's probably this is probably the thing to do i don't maybe maybe not but i think that's a reasonable thing to do honestly uh they say they don't have contact with boston or anyone outside which, yeah, that may be a bit of a stretch, um, especially given later, but it, it also said they also say that it's only handling the northeast. So like could they contact someone outside of the northeast? Like contact someone uh in next closer? Like uh in like a couple states over and they could direct it, conceivably. I don't know. Does this I think this would probably catch D- Yeah. This would also <laughs> probably catch DC, I think. Mm-hmm. So no. No, oh, not okay. Maybe not. I thought it was the. I I thought it was the northwest or northeast coast. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. No. Where is, I Maybe. always forget so exactly. You're, th- yeah. you're thinking of northwest. No, Washington D.C. California, Washington D.C. No, D.C. is in uh, yeah. in uh the east. D.C. is between Maryland and Virginia. But I'm thinking of the state capital. The Wa- Washington State, yeah, yeah. Um, Washington State is different. Washington State is uh, over well, there, but yeah. Once <laughs> again, the, the, the okay. two Canadians try and figure out fucking. I, uh, it could be in the um, it's down the high. It's 
a state over from Philadelphia, which we know is getting hit. So yeah, Washington, uh, DC could be down. Like conceivably, mm-hmm. they don't mention anything about it in the movie, but um, this could have gotten a good chunk of uh, Congress if they wanted to. But it's never mentioned. I guess he didn't think that far ahead. I don't know. So yeah, they end up in a crowded di- uh, diner um, where they're talking about what's happening. Uh, they end up giving, uh, getting some TV saying that like a lot of the Northeast is gone and they're kind of in the epicenter. They don't know. And it eventually points, someone eventually points out that like, yeah, we got to get out of here because eventually it's going to get here too. So everyone starts to leave. The power also goes out at this point. Uh, Ellie, the, the four of them tried, uh, the five of them yeah, five of them, the five of the main characters. Uh, Julian has his daughter with him, Jess. Jesse. She's also been around. She's looking, pr- she's being a child. That's not, not saying that in a negative light. That sounded mean, but uh, she's doing child things, which is just a part of it. Uh, Wahlberg does a chunk of stuff to cheer her up. He lets her play with a moon ring he has, which I, is a thing he does. He gets her to laugh and whatever. When they go to leave, he uh, they find a uh, a plant a greenhouse worker that is offering to like take uh, drop uh, grab some stuff from their place and then head out. Julian, uh, in the meantime, catches a ride with some other guys to go try to find his wife in Princeton and te- and uh, leaves Jesse with uh, the Moors, the Moors, and uh, Moors. I, that sounds like I'm saying the Moors, like the culture. Like the, the the Middle East, like mm-hmm. African. I think Moors is African, right? I don't remember. I'm forgetting my Middle East and my medieval. I don't know. I don't know my I don't know my Moorish very well. I don't know my Moorish history good. Uh, anyway, the Moor the Jesse gets left with the Moors while Julian goes to uh, try to find his wife in Princeton. They end up going. Uh, at this point in the movie, they're pretty well conv- uh, con- uh, convinced that all this is airborne spread. So when Julian's vehicle goes through a uh, a four uh, country road with a bunch of trees around it that has a bunch of people hanging from them, they start l- closing the vents, and then they notice, and then uh, Julian notices that there's a uh, cut in the top of the uh, like this is a convertible with like a uh, canvas top. Or like a let, I, I think it's like rubberized stuff, whatever they make it out of. I think it, I don't think it's leather. It looks like leather sometimes. But there's like there's a cut in the roof which lets the air in, so they can't seal themselves in. He tries to calm down one of the ladies, but eventually the driver stops, uh, feels weird for a bit, and then drives them straight into a tree. A couple of people get thrown from the car. Julian survives the car crash. Um, and then dejectedly sits down and, uh, offs himself. I, yeah, I don't want to get too detailed into all this. This is all pretty, this is all pretty gruesome. If yeah, um, see the content warning at the beginning of the, uh, clear to the beginning of the episode. I think my, my biggest concern with this whole entire scene was, um, how the crash ended up happening because like three bodies go flying except for, uh, the one guy who was in the front seat with, like, no form of obstruction. Like, I get, like, if the driver goes flying, like, maybe the steering wheel stopped him. And, like, in theory, it would have been, like, two people tops. It would have been the the person where John was sitting and the person that uh, was in the third or the middle seat of the vehicle would theoretically be launched out the window, but they showed like three people go at this window. Um, to be fair, they could have taken off their seatbelts, which would have, and maybe just Julian kept his on, which is why he didn't fly out of it. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. There's a lot of, I I, I can't remember this scene enough to, to to sit there and like poke holes in this, but like, just like, it got me thinking like, why? Yeah, they, they do. don't show the yeah, they don't show the inside but of the car during not the enough. scene. So yeah. Anywhere you wear your mm-hmm. seatbelt. Yeah. Yeah, wear your seatbelt, kids. The car doesn't start unless you've put your seatbelt in. Yeah. Um, that's the end of that plot line. Um, they stop hearing from them. 
uh, almost still getting some like calls from the guy she had gone to dessert with. Um, I think that's probably part of that's another thing that's with the awkwardness of that whole thing is the guy's clearly the problem here. Like she I don't think she actually cheated on him, like did any cheating. I think she like entertain like went to ice cream with this guy um, was like, oh, yeah, that's probably fine. Um, innocent enough. We work together or whatever. And then the guy clearly started stalking her after that. And he is clearly stalking her. Because she's just like afraid to answer the phone when he calls. So yeah, that's another thing where yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't think this is like that sort of marriage problem. Um, I think she's just under a lot of stress because she's getting stalked. Um, so that's still happening. That eventually, that plot line yeah. eventually just fades into the ether. But um, she eventually tells Mark about that a little bit later. It doesn't amount to much. The guy at this point, the one guy from the plant nursery suggests that it's the plants doing this. And he gives the explanation I did about the plants that make uh, wasps want to kill that particular caterpillar. Which, yeah, I don't think that's how that works. Because um, this is definitely implying that all the plants have gained this ability spontaneously. Which, yeah. I mean, again, this isn't a very plausible film. But I don't, I don't think... I don't think that's really Shyamalan's imp uh, uh, intent here. I think he's going for something a good bit more mystical. I don't think it works, but he is going for something a good bit more mystical. We also see in the background a nuclear power plant in this scene. Yeah, I think that's just another red herring they're doing. Um, I think it's maybe another environmental thing, which uh, nuclear can... Uh, nuclear, to my understanding, is like a... Good, like it can be dangerous there's a very dangerous uh like way it can be but most of the time it's safe and like a good bit more uh less uh devastating the environment than like a lot of electric uh, electrical production again i'm not like an electrical uh uh engineer or uh like strategist so yeah i don't know i don't know the whole story on that they end up heading down the road with this these uh, this couple from the nursery. They are stopped by a uh, army private, who uh, I guess was off base when the plants got uh, plants killed everyone there, and he uh, tries to and he eventually eventually a bunch of people start piling into this intersection, and he sort in this uh, military private uh, army private starts to take charge. Um, I kind of like this character, actually. It's kind of neat. I think he's kind of a neat character. Just sort of like he seems like he ends up being the natural leader of the group for a little bit. Um, he's really stepping up. He deserves more of a leadership role than probably Wahlberg does. Wahlberg kind of gets like shoved into leadership roles because he's the main character. Like that's another thing I meant to say. I don't think he's mm. like particularly qualified compared to anyone else. But yeah. They eventually uh, put some thoughts together that, like, uh, they should go into a, uh, like, deserted county and try to get away from more people. They eventually decide, like, hey, you know what would maybe uh, follow through further on that is we should uh, break up for into smaller groups and then maybe we won't get targeted. Um, so they end up breaking into smaller groups. One of those groups uh, has... Uh, like the private eventually gets infected and yeah, just charges his firearm in a way that um, other people can pick it up after he's gone. Um, that's actually, they do a scene of that in the city or in Phil uh, the Philadelphia scene we get. And it's sort of, it could be chilling. It's not really though. Just like where uh, one, the, a police officer takes out his gun, uses it. Another guy gets out of a car picks up the gun, uses it, and then we see another person pick up the gun. And it's kind of, that's definitely a creepy scene. Um, but yeah, those sort of, there are scenes in this that are okay, but um, just, I don't think any of them are like particularly like amazingly done. Creepy on paper. I think a lot of them are creepy in script version, but I just don't think they're done in a particularly good way. So that convinces them to break into further groups. So, uh, 
Al- Alma, Elliot, and Jess uh, stay with uh, two teenage boys. Um, they eventually stumble across a uh, farmhouse, and they try to. They eventually are scoping out, seeing if anyone's in there. Uh, if no one's in there, they're going to try to break in and get some food. Uh, but it turns out there's some people in there who are just like, go away. We're not letting any of your dirty oxygen, uh, dirty air in the two teenagers don't take this very well and start kicking at the doors. Um, and the people inside the house respond by shooting the two teenagers. So yeah, that's, um, kind of interesting. Uh, that's a, it's a, I don't know, pretty tragic. I don't think it's, it's one of the better death scenes in the movie i think it's the only murder scene yeah yeah that's true too it's it's one of those things that like if the world is like humanity was falling apart as we've seen it you'd think there'd be more people like this where they're like we're gonna hoard the resources and like it's one of those things where like uh if you're trying to show a threat, you'd think that there would be a lot more threats like this. Yeah. It's like one of the f- fallouts of the world falling apart is humanity starts to slowly fall apart. And it, it's one of those things in horrors that you can actually show half decently. And they, they, they show it once. Yeah, and this is an R-rated movie. They <laughs> do a lot of good blood effects, I think. There's also... A- Oh, I didn't mention this, but there was a scene in the diner where this one woman just shows this guy getting eaten by lions. And I'm like, wait, why are you showing it this to everybody? Mm-hmm. This is just a snuff film. Why are you showing this? Because this woman's just showing this video on like the iPhone 2 or whatever. What they have for iPhones in 2008? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, um, I don't care. But also, like, you, you think that to like, like, I guess it's not that far along into this whole entire uh, event to actually be able to see, like, uh, wildlife starting to go absolutely fucking nuts. But you'd think if there was, like, a large population of uh, uh, dead people that um, wildlife would kind of start mitigating or migrating its way um, into, like, large cities and larger populations, but... I guess that, that has a lot to do with uh, how far into uh, the apocalypse this is. Yeah, and like in in like the three months later scene at the end of the movie, we don't get like that. Remember that scene in like uh, Avengers Endgame where like Ant Man comes out of the time machine and he sees like the world that's like been half populated and it's just like a dump, like a wasteland, and it's like a really gut punchy mm-hmm. moment we don't have anything like that in this movie at the end of this but like they just kind of move back into their old apartment yeah that's because the, like well like it, that's only because like one it was in only one isolated part of, of uh america that uh this actually happened so yeah but that isolated part is completely gone fucked yeah though. but like that isolated part is going to have the resources of the rest of the country to help prop it up still. Yeah, but they everyone isn't going to move Compared to New to, York. Like, if it... Immediately afterwards. No, but a lot of jobs would open up in New York that were... I guess. Uh, ...previously very competitive, uh, like, uh, financial support for people who are struggling to get back up on their feet and stuff like that, like... There's there's some ways that it's gonna get mitigated and it's gonna downplay the effects of it, but like that, that that's a whole different other story about yeah. the whole uh, reconstruction after a disaster. And I mean the, the 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 population difference between what happened here in this film and what happened in the end game is like. 4 billion compared to like maybe 100 million or something like that of people that's a lot though. because of this right that's like it is when you you say like when you break down the numbers yes it is a lot but it also like half the population compared to like when you're looking at 8 billion it, it it's not as much as you'd you'd eh. mitigate it like um 
but once again, this I'm also being very conservative on those numbers. Um, this is only a estimate, like on how many people actually passed away, because like once again, this is only went on for 24 hours. So at that, there's there's probably more people like Mark Wahlberg's character and Zoe Deschanel's character who who also ended up surviving the whole 24 hour period which ultimately yeah i don't know like um you, you we call this a disaster movie like it, it it is definitely a disaster but like it's also not exactly as much of a disaster as uh uh we break it down and i mean you are correct though uh like canada or the united states during the covid19 pandemic everybody was like oh only x amount of people died and i'm like yeah that's still a lot of people that is a lot of people who died from the covid19 and like i i think this kills more people than like i think this kills more people than covid period the thing is my thing though like I think this, like mm -hmm. full stop, this this event as described kills more people than COVID did has done from the beginning to this day. Like this is the greatest but in a mitigated like, area. Yeah, still I think like New York City has like what does New York have like eleven million people or something? Hold on, New York population eight point five million people. So let's say like. Like, what's the death toll? That could be like eight million, eight million people, six million, five, four million. That's like this is like a, a loss of life that has been like unheard of since like the Black Death. Like, I cannot like this is. I think like, like this could maybe maybe uh yeah, but the, 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 <laughs> that's a, that's another thing that I'd like to point out, like the the. the... And I know I'm going to sound like the asshole for saying this, but, like, the Bl Black Death was not an isolated event. Yeah, the but, Black I mean... Death happened over a l larger period of time and, like, all over the world. This, this is, is like if you... It's not, it's not the same, though, because you're... It, it's like you, if you carpet-bombed the entirety of the Northeast, like, you'd, like... Isn't that like that's mm -hmm. I think you're easily looking at like tens of millions of people dead. Like this is the like this is comparable to like a world war. This is like one of the, this would be like one of the greatest losses of life known to human history. But we're not talking about carpet bombing like a place. Sure, lots of people died in the initial like transaction but like uh, ultimately there's going to be people that also made it through that we didn't we're not calculating and we're not getting like a death toll number at the end of the movie where we're like this is how many people died this is uh how things ended up but like yeah i think that's a bit of a problem because there's a, like like it's implication this could kill a lot of people like i don't i'm not clear on how many people died well the, like even the implication at that at that the end of the movie that it's that it's spreading is is the bigger concern i think yeah um yeah by the end of the movie dead. they start showing that like it's happening in like france yeah i don't, I don't, I don't know. know yeah it's, it's anyway. just one of those things that the, the, i can't draw a conclusion from because there's not really um a good exposition of how it's actually impact like that's the one thing that like endgame did really good is it showed how the snap ended up affecting like the rest of the world's population and was like very adamant that half the world like I think ultimately like um John Oliver who does last week to end tonight brought up a really really good point um about the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and he said that uh 1% of the population died from COVID-19 which is like the basis of the the uh TV show um I think the 1% it's called where the, uh, uh an event took out 1% of the population and how it affected like the whole entire world so yeah I'm not trying to downplay it but I'm just yeah. saying it's not it's it, it's hard to compare apples 
and oranges, especially when uh, it's like the the, the two two uh, the two bases we're drawing on is like fifty percent of the population, and um, I think if it was a worldwide event, yeah, fifty percent of the population could have easily been wiped out by this plague. But that's a, that's a whole different story, and like. And like would have been way better of a story than like oh it's just the northeast, which is like a really weird implication. But I guess I guess it's trying to say that like um, you said earlier that there there was a, a lot of red herrings in the movie like nuclear nuclear waste. But I mean that could all play a part in ultimately what caused the 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 neurotoxin. I guess was the higher concentration of uh, nuclear waste but that's that's also like a really 2008 way of thinking of uh, nuclear energy and I don't know like the eventual implications of what nuclear energy will do for the planet but um, it's kind of generally shifted from like good to bad in the last like 20 years or so so Moving on to try to get through the rest of this. They come to another house and find a uh, a w lone hermit woman. Like, it's just like, oh, yeah, what are you doing out here? I don't like visitors, but um, for some reason, I'm going to let you stay here. Out of, like, rules mm -hmm. of hospitality? Which isn't, like, it's a thing. Yeah. Like, that's a known cultural thing. Not really for this woman's demographic, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know that we. Yeah, this is ultimately really funny because eventually we see, we see that that this lady absolutely has no clue what's happening in the world currently, and the, like even that she's like two random people walk onto her properties, and she's like, oh, I bet you want dinner, and then yeah. she feeds them. Like it's not even like, oh, this this is happening. I need to like keep people safe and like protect people in this side uh... okay and she's like um in this scenario it's like and she's really 70? concerned that they're going to take her stuff too like there's no reason she should be this hospitable to them like they, and they barely say like three words to her mm -hmm. i think like there's like a conversation that her and uh elliot have the character's name is mrs jones uh but like i don't think i there's maybe like one line of dialogue shared between her and uh, um, the white uh, and Alma, but that's about it. So yeah, mm -hmm. they end up spending the night there and having dinner uh, over dinner. Uh, Jesse tries to take a extra piece of, I think cornbread and gets her hand slapped really hard. Um, which I mean, that cornbread's not going to like it gets, I think it gets stale overnight. I don't know why you're um, saving it. I think I think everything in the the which is funny to me because uh, she gets like fourth billing on Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, the actor actress who plays her is uh, Betty Buckley, but I guess like when there's like there's no real stars of this movie. Like you've got your main characters. Like, she's got, like, maybe 20 minutes of runtime. Which is more than a lot of people. She she gives off a lot of, um, like, mm -hmm. horror movie vibes. You think she's going to be more dangerous than she is. But, um, after a while, uh, she wanders outside. Uh, 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 after the they wake up in the morning, Elliot wakes up to find that, um, Alma and Jesse have wandered off somewhere, uh, or just are missing. Which you think is going to be like a big problem. It's going to be the premise of the last bit of the movie. It's not. But he uh, wanders out. Starts looking for everybody. And then uh, he wanders into Mrs. Jones' room. To find a doll lying in her bed. And then uh, Mrs. Jones is just like. Oh you're trying to steal my stuff. I want you out. And starts screaming at him. Um, he denies this in a very comical way. It's very meme worthy. Um, worst one of the worst performances in the film at this point. She ends up going outside for a bit while he uh 
does this. There's a bit of a costume change for both these characters that we don't see them change clothes at any point. But uh, and eventually she get uh, Mrs. Jones gets uh, infected by the neurotoxin and decides to uh, um, break open the windows to try to infect uh, Elliot, who has um, barricaded himself in the house to try to keep the air out. She breaks open window. He ends up being fine. He ends up wandering along uh, way a bit more and uh, is managing to contact. Uh, this house used to be like an underground railroad thing. So there's like um, emergency piping under between this and like a spring uh, spare house, um, which uh, they would use to alert people if stuff was going down. And he and he uh, says uh, to. Uh, says through that and manages to contact Alma and Jesse who are in the spare house for whatever reason that's never explained they end up doing that and they have a convert they have a whole thing they reminisce about the mood ring which is a whole thing in their relationship eventually he's just like oh god I, I'm not gonna stay here and die alone I want to be with you so he steps outside and then the uh, neurotoxins don't affect him and it turns out that um, they stopped doing it after a while. And that's close. And that um, at that point, we get a three months later. It's revealed that this entire event um, only uh, like did damage for 24 hours. Which, um, I mean, there might be a biological precedent for that. I don't know. It might make sense. I, I'm not going to speak to it. Uh, Elliot and Alma have moved back into their whole house. They appear to have adopted Jesse, uh, which fair. That's a good, honest thing to do. I can't complain much. That seems like a thoroughfare. Um, they were probably, they might've been in a godparent situation there. Who knows? I don't know if it was said, uh, they call them and, uh, he calls, uh, Jesse calls, uh, them auntie and uncle, um, which makes sense. So, mm -hmm. Jesse's going back to school, so she goes to school. Um, it's revealed that Alma is pregnant now because that was a result of like the earlier conversation where they were saying they wanted to wait to have children. Whatever that I don't know this, and that's sort of the end of the movie. Um, also, there's like a speed a spiel on TV that says, "Oh, the plants are gonna kill us, so we better smarten up." And then the very final scene in the movie is uh, the same. The happening is going to be happening in the France. So the happening. The happening. I don't know. How do you. What's the, what's the happening in French? We'll find out. I have here. no clue. If I can find <laughs> out. I do not speak French. Les détroquis. I think. That That's a little bit more threatening in, in in France, but oh yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that probably should have just been the title. <laughs> Maybe they should have started in France. I don't know. That might have been more threatening. Anyway, that's the end of the movie. I give it a one, Cody. What do you give it? Uh, this movie, I give like a, a probably on the lower end of the scale but I, I i see promise and i think i could have made it better oh yeah i think you could have well uh, like i mean they didn't really like give me a good like starting point but like i think anybody could really do this better just with like some form of like interpersonal skills make this more emotionally tragic and then also change the ending the ending was so stupid like i, I would have like i don't feel like Shyamalan. character yeah, death with somebody yeah. that like i've had some some level of like emotional connection with yeah one main character death in this sort of disaster movie yeah it's very low um a lot of death counts uh that we see mm -hmm. but like yeah, only one, like, real named character that we, like, like or, like, appreciate as, like, a main character. And they, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not great. I don't know. What are we doing next? <laughs> I feel like we've said all our pieces. I have no clue. Yeah. I don't know. What's on the list? What's on my list? Good question. Uh, What kind of genre do you want to do? What are you uh, in the mood for in the next couple of weeks? 
like, do you have a list? I have a list here. Uh, like, um, just uh, like, do you have a genre you kind of want to get into or an era? Uh, no, not uh, necessarily an era either. Okay. How many, um, okay. I gotta, I gotta, I'm going to open up a, open up a dice here. Roll a d20. <laughs> go back to season one stuff. I'll roll a d20 and go down the list. See where we're at. 16. Have 20 two, movies still two. on this list. Uh, I mean, we've we've skipped over a lot of stuff. We've just added a bunch of stuff to the docket. I don't think I have 20, though. I have 17 things on the list. Uh... I've kind of had like a project I wanted to do. We kind of, uh, I think we maybe vaguely talked about it. Uh, want to do two different Frankenstein movies in a row. Do one Frankenstein and then uh, do another one for the episode after that. Fair. Yeah, because we've we've kind of wanted to do a Frankenstein thing. I kind of we're gonna do uh, like a paired re- a set of reviews with um, the Universal Frankenstein and uh, the Hammer Frankenstein. Uh, what do you want to do first? Original Universal or, uh, 80s Uh, Hammer or 70s Hammer, I think, maybe. It's like a British thing. It has a bunch of, like, uh... I want to do both ends of the spectrum here. Yeah. Um, but what was... I'm trying to think of... Oh, Victor Frankenstein. Hmm, we could get that in there, too. We could do all three of those, it's frankly. A 2015 version. I've seen that. It's all right. We could do um, all three if we wanted to, frankly. Box office bomb. Well, at least then is it's like looking at how the genre, or the, at least that story has progressed. Do we want to do like in chronological yeah. order? Do Universal Hammer and then uh, Victor Frankenstein? No, I think we break the whole progression up. Okay. Because I would not sit there and listen to a podcast that does three okay. Frankenstein movies okay. in a row. Because that's going to get redundant very fast. One of them first. One of them first? And do come back to them later? Okay. Which one do you want to do, uh, do first? So my, my options here are Universal, which is going to be black and white and just completely and entirely awful. Um. 1980s, which is going to do it a little bit more justice, at least. It's supposed to be very good. It's going to be one that's going to be recent and also has Daniel Radcliffe in it. So I think I'm going to go with the third option because, uh, yeah, yeah we can anything do that. else you know, makes it's funny. me want to create my face. It, uh, uh, it <laughs> auto corrected to Victoria Frankenstein when I typed it in. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Yeah, I guess it's odd. Anyway, yeah, we can do Victor Frankenstein next week. Or sometime later. Uh, sure. Keep an eye out for poly sci-fi. We're still getting some pre-production done on that. Uh, yeah. Lots yeah. of pre-production. Yeah. Sorry, it's just we're, we're working on it, and we've had other stuff. Uh, I think I got sick at some point. Um, it's wor- We're working on it. It'll be a thing. But yeah, see you later with, uh, yeah. Yeah, Victor Frankenstein. <laughs>